In today's class, we will be talking about attitude measurement techniques. Before we go ahead, let us see what is attitude. As per the Oxford Dictionary, attitude means a settled way of thinking or feeling about something. Example, Jane believes that smoking is unhealthy, feels disgusted when people smoke around her and avoids being in situations where people smoke. Perhaps the most straightforward way of finding about someone else's attitudes would be to ask them. However, attitudes are related to self-image and social acceptance. In order to preserve a positive self-image, people's response may be affected by social desirability. They may not tell you about their true attitudes, but answer in a way that they feel socially acceptable. Given this problem, various methods of measuring attitudes has been developed. Before going into that topic, let us have a look at scale of measurement. Scale of measurement refers to ways in which variables, numbers are defined and categorized. Each scale of measurement has certain properties which in turn determines the appropriateness for use of certain statistical analysis. The four scales of measurements are nominal, ordinal, interval and ratio. Let us go ahead and see what is nominal scale. Nominal variables can be placed into categories or can be divided into categories like group of students can be categorized in the following ways such as gender, place of residence, college, etc. They don't have a numeric value. Next, ordinal scale. The ordinal scale contains things that you can place in order. For example, military rank, letter grades in class, hottest to coldest, heaviest to lightest, richest to poorest. Basically, if you can rank data by first, second, third place and so on, then your data is on an ordinal scale. Let us see what is interval scale. An interval scale has ordered numbers with meaningful divisions. Temperature is the example of interval scale. A difference of 10 degrees between 90 and 100 means the same as 10 degrees between 150 and 160. If you have meaningful ordered data, then your data is on the interval scale. Now let us go ahead and see what is the ratio scale is. It has all the qualities of nominal, ordinal and interval scales. This is the only scale that allows you to make ratio comparisons such as Ashok income is 35% more than Vikram or number of times you visit a restaurant after visiting it for the first time. There are numerous scales to measure attitudes. Here are a few of the most common. Thurston, like it type, get man. Now let us go ahead and see what do you mean by Thurston. It is called equal appearing intervals because when you choose the item for your test, you are picking items equally spaced apart. You can have a look at the screen where I have shown you an example of Thurston scaling. Here is a list of statements about attitudes people have towards banks. Please indicate how much you agree or disagree with each statement by placing a tick in the appropriate box. So you can see uh, five questions which have been given there and for five questions you have to answer whether you strongly agree for that or agree for that or neither agree nor disagree and fourth one is disagree and fifth one is strongly disagree. So let us see the first question. I would like to be treated as an individual by my bank. Second question. I dislike having to queue in the bank. Third question. I think my bank should value my long standing custom. Question number four, I want my bank to inform me of exactly what interest my money is making. Question number five, it is important to me to keep tight control of my money. So you can choose either one of the options which are given over there. Now let us see what is the history of Thurston. In psychology and sociology, the Thurston scale was the first nominal technique to measure an attitude. It was developed by Louis Leon Thurston in 1928 as a means of measuring attitudes towards religion. How Thurston scale works in a nutshell. Basically, the Thurston scale consists of a set of statements about a certain issue, each of which has a numeric value stating how favorable or unfavorable it is judged to be. The respondents then tick only those statements to which they agree. After they complete the survey, the mean score is calculated indicating their attitudes. When should 
you use the stone scale surveys. This type of surveys can be used to measure, compare and analyze people's attitudes on certain issues. It can also be used to measure customer or employee satisfaction. Now let us see how to conduct a Thurstone scale survey. So step one, identify a research topic related to an attitude. Depending on the main goal behind your survey, you need to identify the main research topic that you would like to examine with your survey. If possible, you should narrow the focus to a single issue so as to get more valid results. Step number two, develop a series of agree-disagree statements. The first step of conducting a Thurston scale survey is to come up with a large number of statements on a particular topic. Basically, your survey should consist of a series of related statements to which the respondents would agree or disagree. Step number three, assign a score to each of the statements. Each statement should be given a score on the scale of 1 to 11 based on how strong you think it is. Usually the highest score means a strong favorable position while the lowest one means the least favorable. After that you should find the median score given to each statement and then arrange them in ascending order. Now let us have a look at Likert scale. The Likert scale is a 5 point scale which is used to allow the individual to express how much they agree or disagree with a particular statement. You can have a look at the screen where I have shown you an example of Likert scaling. How satisfied are you with purchase, service, company overall? So you have 5 options to choose. Number 1 is very unsatisfied, next unsatisfied, neutral, satisfied, very satisfied. So you can choose one for each question given over there. Let us see the history of Likert scale. The scale is named after its inventor, psychologist Rensis Likert. Now let us have a look at how Likert scale works in a nutshell. A Likert scale is a type of rating scale used to measure attitudes or opinions. With this scale, respondents are asked to rate items on a level of agreement, for example, strong regularly, 5, agree 4, neutral 3, disagree 2, strongly agree 1. Once the respondents have answered, numbers are assigned to the responses. This enables you to assign meaning to the responses. For example, a survey on customer service can enable you to see which of your customer service representatives are providing good service and which are providing poor service. When should you use Likert scale service? Likert scale questions are used in many different types of surveys, whether you are trying to find out how your employees feel about their work or what your customers think about your latest product. Now let us see how to conduct a Likert scale survey. Step number one, define the focus. What is it you are trying to measure? Your topic should be one dimensional, for example, customer service or you are trying to measure the effectiveness of, the, of a particular website. Step number two, generate the Likert scale items. The items should be able to be rated on some kind of scale. For example, politeness could be also rated on a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is not polite at all and 10 is extremely polite. Step number 3. Rate the Likert scale items. While rating the Likert scale items, pick a team of people to go through the items in the step number 2 and rate them as favorable, neutral, unfavorable to your focus. Weed out the items that are mostly seen as unfavorable. Now let us see what do you mean by Gutman scale. A Gutman scale is an ordinary scale type where statements are arranged in a hierarchical order so that someone who agrees with one item will also agree with lower order and less extreme items. In the social sciences, the Gutman scale measures how much positive or negative attitude a person has towards a particular topic. So these are the eight items which are shown on the screen and ranged in an hierarchical order so that someone who agrees with one item will also agree with the lower order or less extreme items. Let us see the history of Gutman scale. This scale is named after Louis Gutman. So how Gutman scale works in a nutshell, 
A Gettman scale is an ordinal scale type where statements are arranged in a hierarchical order so that someone who agrees with one item will also agree with the lower order, easier and less extreme items also. When should you use Gettman scale service? In the social sciences, the Gettman scale is often used to measure an increasing amount of attitude towards a single topic. In education, it's sometimes used to show a student's logical progression through coursework. How to conduct a Gettman scale survey? Step number one, clarify the objective of using Gettman scale. Every scaling method should have a clearly defined objective for effective implementation. Step number two, create a list of statements. I support the prohibition of sales of gun stocks. I do not support any regulation on gun sales to the civilian population. I support the prohibition of gun sales to civilian altogether. I support background checks during the process of gun sales. I support prohibiting gun sales to mentally ill people. So this is the example of how you can cre create a list of statements. Step number three, associate values to each of the statements. The experts involved in the process of developing the statements should assign values to each of the statements according to their importance to the topic. The experts are expected to answer yes if the statement is in favor and no if the statement is not in favor. Also a very critical aspect needs to be addressed at this step. The values assigned should not involve personal opinions of the experts.